What is up guys? It is Niles and we are back working on my 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass. And today we're gonna to be installing an electric power steering pump on this car. By the way. So we are doing an EV conversion on this car. And whenever you do an EV conversion on a car, you lose all the accessories that would be on the front of an internal combustion motor. So like on this motor right here, it has uh, AC compressor, it's got an air pump, it's got an alternator, it's also got a power steering pump. That's great when you have an internal combustion motor because the motor is still running when you're stopped. However, with an electric motor, when you're stopped, the motor is no longer turning. So we can't use that to power any of the accessories that we have. So we have to power those through external means. There's two ways that I could have ran power steering on this vehicle. The first way is where there's a motor on the steering rack or on the steering column, and that motor will assist you in the steering. But installing that would require a lot of cutting, fabricating, and money. The second way and the way that I'm going to be doing it is by using an electric hydraulic pump and pumping fluid into the original steering box. These 442s came with pretty good steering boxes with pretty good ratios, so I want to keep that in the car. I also think if I wanted to ever go back to stock, this would be the easiest way. I think something that scares a lot of hot rodders from doing EV conversions is the reversibility. And running an external hydraulic pump through the original steering box is what I think is the least intrusive way. Power steering pump that I'm using are these ones from a Volvo. They can be found in the junkyard, but these only came on the five cylinder Volvos. These pumps are very nice. They come with their own brackets. Um, with these rubber isolators. I am not going to be using any of the original bracket, but I am going to be using these rubber isolators. Header panel is off, guys. This car looks so different without its front face on. But for placement of the power steering pump, I originally wanted it right here, right behind the headlight, and the cap would be right here. But there's just not enough space um, with the headlight and the header panel on. It would have been perfect, though, because steering box is right there so we could run super short lines so instead of putting it there i'm gonna put it right here in front of the radiator um, i'm using this bracket right here and use the core support to make some something to suspend it in the way the tubing that we're using is mostly three-fourths inch that's what i'm using for most of my structure i do have one inch right here for a spacer and then i also have a one inch flat bar just so this can be my mounting surface where this mounts to that center bracket. This is what uh, the power steering pump's gonna be mounted to. And I also think I'm gonna put the uh, vacuum pump that I need on this car also in the front here. That looks good. I'm gonna mark everything out so I know where to drill my holes and do my measurements for the bracket that needs to be for the power steering pump. This bracket, guys, is looking super sturdy. It's not fully welded yet, but it fits perfectly. This fits into here, into this kind of cage that we made here. Bracket is done. It just needs to get cleaned up and painted, but I test fitted the power steering pump here and it fits perfectly. I gotta get this mounted onto the car and hopefully it can support everything. It looks so good in here and it is also so strong. It's fully bolted to the core support and there's literally no flex in here when I put weight on it. I am not gonna be using this pump right here. Instead, I'm gonna be using this other one that I have that has a remote filler. And this, I'm gonna cut it up, the bracket, and find a place to put it. I'm thinking right here, so this way I can reuse the same hose. I was also thinking here, because I think it fits here better, but that's also kind of really far for where the line. Um, I'm going to put the header panel back on so I can get it, make sure everything clears, but then I can get started on the lines and then also start getting working on the wiring. These fit so well behind here, guys. So much clearance. Literally, I'm not worried about any interference at all. But that looks so good in there. And I am definitely going to have to cut this up uh, just because when I put it in here, it's definitely way too far in. And it does look really good right here but it's just so far from the reservoir. 
bracket is painted guys and I just love that VHT satin black it looks so good on everything I was thinking about painting this entire core support but I think I might just do that later um, and leave it as is for now now that that's in I can start doing all the lines before that I need to pull off all the stuff around here so I can get to the steering box I love how I'm con so concerned about making everything easy to access and to refill this power steering when the stock one is just buried there underneath the alternator and cruise control. That is so hard to get to, guys. Okay, all that stuff is out of the way. It took a little bit longer than I expected. I think one of the fittings was cross-fitted on here, so it was super hard to get out. But these are the fittings I used. These ones are the GM power steering to AN6. And this one, I don't know what it is, but it just fits whatever the Volvo power steering pump is. These lines are looking so good, guys. So the pressure line is an AN6 PTFE line, and those are rated for about 3,000 PSI, so it'll be perfect for what this pump is putting out. Um, one area of concern is just the fittings. Usually you want to use steel ones. These ones are just aluminum, but hopefully they should be fine. The return line is just a rubber AN6 line, and it's, it's not going to see that much pressure. So I still have a lot more work to do, like all the wiring and also routing the remote filler. But I want to test these lines and make sure there's no leaks. So I'm going to cut this back, fill the reservoir with some fluid, I put 12 volts to it and make sure there's no leaks in here. Okay, so wires stripped back. I'm gonna use this battery to power this pump. And it's just a negative, positive, and then there's a signal uh, on for this. Sounds good. I'm gonna find a way to clamp this and then turn the steering wheel on the inside. Wow, that was actually cool. That was actually pretty easy to turn. Um, and no leaks, guys. All right, so wiring is mostly done. Um, I just gotta clean this up so it looks a little bit neater. But I have it going through this uh, fuse right here and then coming up to the top. What I really like about these G-bodies is they plug into the car through these screws on the side. So this way I can use these posts to plug in any accessories that I'm going to have. For this bracket, I did have to cut it up. I, I cut it up so it fit a little bit better in here, screwed it in, and then painted it black. It barely clears the hood ones closed, but it clears. The next thing I gotta do is just connect these, the reservoir to the pump. Um, originally, I just had some AN10 hose that was just going to connect them, but it just looks super ugly because it just formed a giant S and didn't really look good at all. So to fix that and connect them, what I'm going to be using is these two hoses. This is the original hose, and this is a 5 8 heater hose for like a LS swap. I just got it because of the 90 degree, but we're going to cut these up and then connecting them using this heater hose connector to sort of have like a custom hose go in between them. The power steering pump is wired and plumbed. It is just temporarily wired into the blower motor. So whenever I flip the AC switch, the motor turns on. Um, final test is making sure the car still starts and then the power, that also that the power steering works. I think I added probably about like 510 horsepower if I were keeping this motor in here just because those old school style power steering pumps do suck a lot of horsepower. Let's see if this car still starts. Battery's definitely weak. Of course, car starts. Let's flip the AC on. Yep, 
got power steering. Turn it off. Yep, lost it. Cool. I can't wait to take this on a test drive, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. There's definitely so much that I have to do for this project car. I'm going to be taking care of all the small things and getting this car ready and saving up for the EV swap. But until then, I'm going to keep this car running on the original motor until the electric motor and batteries are here and purchased so that this car is still enjoyable. I feel like a lot of project cars get left on the side once they stop moving. But thanks for watching and stay tuned for future episodes.